the comments if you're watching after the fact. Like I said, I always like to make sure um, the audio and video is working first before I continue for obvious reasons. Um, so I'll just give it another minute. Uh, feel free to say hello in the chat. We got Bold Caution Productions here. Um, today's color is going to be Grandma Sweater. Well, I guess so if that's uh, orangish is uh, her sweater. And yeah, it looks like everything's good, right? Maybe not. Why can't I hear it? No, here we go. Okay, we're good. We're going to continue here. So today we are going to be learning about Canon in D and how to play it. Um, hello, the bird is here. Well, you have some time to kill, and best of luck to you today, the bird, on your piano recital. All right, let me get the Facebook stream started. Just give me less than a minute, and then we're going to get right on into the lesson. Hello students, your piano teacher Tim here from Piano Lessons on the Web. If it's your first time out watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You have all notifications turned on by hitting that bell. Because we have new lessons coming out all the time, you don't want to miss a beat. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you like our page for the same reason. So welcome out everybody. I'm so happy to have you with us once again. We're going to get into the lesson here. Hello, Karen's here and Myla, welcome. And a newbie, well, or uh, Myla is a newbie here, so welcome. Everybody give Myla a warm welcome. Pratt, you should back once again. All right, we're going to get right into it here. I don't want to go on too long. I'm going to get right into it. All right, here we go. So if you've been wondering how to play Canon and D on the piano, well, your piano teacher, Tim, has you covered because I'm going to show you how to play Canon and D on the piano, but I'm gonna break it down first, uh, teaching you how to play the bass line, then I'm gonna teach you how to play the melody, give you some tips there, and then uh, we're gonna wrap everything up after that because I'm then going to give you some helpful tips on how to polish this piece to perfection. Okay, all right, looks like everybody's doing well, great. Um, you know what, guys? Uh, give me a second here. I apologize for this. Mm. See, every version of this Canon D is different. And, yeah, I guess we'll just have to go with that. All right, that's fine. All right, here we go. Now we got it up. Okay, perfect. Okay, the first thing you want to start out with is obviously the bass line to the piece. So obviously you can see right in the beginning that it starts out with some arpeggios of some chords. Now what I would do is I would first learn just the bottom note of each of these uh, arpeggios. So I'd play D. And then it goes to A, B, F sharp, G, D, and then D, or G, and then A after that. Oh, sorry about that. I'm having trouble here. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me start this again. Sorry about that. Okay, the first thing I would start out with is the bass line. Now, as you can see, it starts here with some arpeggios outlining some chords. But what I would do is I would first learn the first note of each of these arpeggios. So the first grouping is D, and then it goes down to A, and then up to B, down to F sharp, and then D, uh, G, D, 
and then G, A, and then it repeats. Um, the reason I want you to do that is you will see that outline of notes throughout the entire piece. And then you want to start to actually put them together as arpeggios as they are written. Just like that. And then looking throughout the rest of the, that piece, that bass line is pretty much persistent throughout the entire piece. It actually does not change throughout the entire thing. So spend plenty of time going over that bass line over and over and over again, remembering to start out with the first note of each set, just to kind of get down the pattern of how each set moves from one to another. If you have to know, um, it goes D, and then it goes four notes down the bass line. Oops. If you don't know, it starts on D, and then the next note, A, is four notes down. One, two, three, four. And then the next note you want is B, so that's um, one, two up. And then you're gonna go down four. One, two, three, to F sharp. And then you're gonna go up one, or up two, rather, that's called. Down four, and then up four, and then up two. So it's a mixture of going down four, up two, down four, up two, down four, and then it goes up, up, like that. Okay, now let me introduce you to the melody. Now the great thing about this piece and why I actually recommend it for people on the beginner side is it starts out, first of all, with no melody at all, right there. And then it comes in with just one note at a time coming up from the um, F sharp here. It's just a simple descending scale bass line, basically. Going in seconds, and then it comes back up a little bit. So learn that um, first melody, because you're gonna see the skeleton of that. I mean, you're gonna see those notes in some form as you continue throughout the piece. For example, this line right here, For example, this line right here with the chords, the, if you take the top notes of each of these chords, it should look familiar. It should look literally like the melody line we just played on the line above it. You're just adding in chord notes below it. So as you can see, it's really helpful to get that. And then, um, now every version of this piece is different. So you're, you might see something different in this version that you see in another version. But basically what happens is each time the melody comes in, they will add something to it. Maybe a different rhythm, slightly different pattern of notes. And then as you can see down on the next line, that you have very similar notes. You're just adding in some notes on the bottom now. So it's really good because it starts out simpler and it gradually gets more and more complex as you go along. As you can see, as you continue throughout, each line just adds a little bit more to that melody with the bass line luckily staying the same so that makes it a lot more manageable one thing I want to show you or tell you about is you definitely want to become familiar with your scales on this piece because you are going to actually be playing them because you will actually be playing them Try that again. But make sure you practice your scales because you will actually be seeing these over and over again in the later parts of this piece. So knowing where those finger crosses is and what notes you're going to be hitting helps you out a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be short of a lesson. I still have a little bit more to talk about today, but I do want to check in with the chat really quick because I always want to make sure that um, everything is going well. All right, it looks like it's going well. 
Uh, right down the fingering of the arpeggios. Um, yeah, I can go over that really quick. I don't know if I can write them in right now because um, I don't really have it set up to do that. But let's take a look here. Let me walk you through the fingering on the arpeggios because it's kind of similar. Like once you get down the beginning, let me make sure these are all the same. Yep. Okay, so you have these arpeggios um, throughout the piece. So D, A, D, F sharp. Because they are more spread apart than most arpeggios, I would do this. I would use fingers five, two, one, crossover two. So five, two, one, two. Next one, five, two, one, two. Next one, five, two, one, two. Next one, five, two, one, two, 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 just like that. Tim, I was get bored of scales, too bad. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, the bird. <laughs> Figuring out of the arpeggios is the easiest of all. Um, okay, everybody, let me continue here with the lesson. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. There's more to the lesson, but if you're liking the lesson so far, make sure you smash that like button because it lets other students know this is a quality lesson they can learn from as well. All right, on to more playing tips. Okay, a big tip I have for you on learning this piece is to learn one line at a time. Like I mentioned, before that it, each line starts out really simple and then as each line progresses, it gets slightly more complicated line to line. So you can actually think of it as each line that you're learning is a skeleton to the next line, meaning that like you're basically gonna have those same notes, just altering it a little bit. I mentioned that before. So you want to definitely tackle this one, one line at a time because it goes in order from least difficult, basically, to most difficult. Okay, and then once you've been working on it for a while, obviously you're going to start to have problem areas come up specifically in the later pages. So like most um, pieces and most pieces of work in music, I recommend that you learn the, um, basically start from the beginning when you're first learning it. But what you want to do after the first few weeks is you want to actually start the piece where it starts to get more and more difficult. That will help clear up those areas to make them match the beginning of the piece. Okay. Where can I get this free sheet music? Did I give you guys a link in the description? I forget if I did. I guess not, huh? All right, let me get you a link. Um, now I'm not sure if you need an account or not but let me get you a a link here everybody from where i got it here you go you can actually find a lot of different versions on the internet so if that link doesn't work for whatever reason just type in canon and d uh, piano sheet music or Canon and D piano PDF. Lee Galloway has the best version of Canon and D. Oh, I should have checked that out. I didn't know about that. Franny says the fingering of the arpeggios is the easiest of all. Exactly one has to memorize the left hand movements. Exactly. Okay. I'm not good when it comes to left hand. 
Well, you're probably right-handed, right, Avi? That's pretty normal, then. Ah, uh, Avi was finally early today. All right, and how's everybody doing today? I'm doing pretty well. A lot of some other comments come in here. It's very rainy today. A little tired. Um, and then I'll be announcing some things here in the next few minutes. I, actually, nah, let me keep scrolling. Hello from Italy. Love Canon and D from uh, For You. Thank you for so much for that. I love uh, your, your screen name. It's the best. Uh, I am broke. Can't give super chat today. Avi, if you're broke... No worries about don't giving not giving me a super chat. You uh, spend the money where you need to spend it. Yes, you did give us earlier or someone to get from. This is the best version. Okay. Canon and C is good too. Yeah, you can technically play it in any key. That is true. All right, everybody. Let me kind of walk you through some stuff here. Um, what's going on? It looks like it's going to be a little bit shorter of a lesson today. As I kind of figured it would be, Canon and D really isn't that complicated of a piece. Um, so I didn't think this was going to be very, very long. If you also, um, also while I'm thinking about it or, or finding some other things or showing you some other things, um, if there's anything else you wanted to know about playing in Canon and D, uh, let me know while we're here. But in the meantime... I'm going to pop up some other things here, kind of walk you through what we're going to be doing the next few weeks. Uh, apologize for missing the – sorry, my head itched. Uh, sorry for missing um, Friday's lesson. What happened was I ran short on time this week. The lessons I put out this week, as you may have noticed, uh, the a lot more editing work went into those to make them more engaging and things like that. So I put a lot of time and thought into those and that actually caused me, like, like, I spent so much time on those, I ran a little short to devise Friday's lesson. I was going to double up for today and teach that lesson today, but I felt rushed on it. And actually, I'm at a point now where if it's not going to be a good quality lesson, I'm going to postpone it and do it when I can do it at the best of my ability. Because if I put something else, I, I learned uh, if I put something out there that's not that great, I just end up wasting my time. And everybody else's time because then the lesson doesn't perform as well and then people can't find it, which is a problem. All right. Um, that being said, uh, next Friday, where I'm going to be teaching you how to add chords to a melody. I did a lesson on that like a long time ago, but I think it's definitely time for an update because I can teach that lesson a lot better now. And that first lesson wasn't that great. Um, and then exercises uh, to level up your left hand playing on Sunday. And then the following Friday, the circle of fifths explained in under 10 uh, minutes or something like that. I'm still kind of devising what kind of different spin I'm going to put on that circle of fifths. But anyway, you can find this calendar by going to my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, and going to the community tab. Um, if you want an email reminder 30 minutes before we meet, feel free to fill out that form. But if not, you can scroll down and check out the calendar. So I just wanted to throw you throw that out there. Um, if you are interested in learning a lot more about piano music, I highly recommend you check out the courses over on my website as well. But I won't get too far into that right this second. Okay, how's everybody doing over here? Good. <clears throat> it's probably been 15 minutes-ish and done. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Is that a problem? Uh, let's see. Julio uh, says, thank you, found it. We'll listen after the lesson. Great. Oh, oh to Karen saying to Julio. Um, a bit off topic here, but can you do a lesson on large jumps? I have uh, trouble with my... Have to leave my keys reach further uh, than the length of my hands. You know, I have an exercise. I don't know if this is exactly what you're going to be looking for, but let me do this. Hold on. Um, I'm trying to think. Two hand jumps. I can't, it came out a little bit over a year ago, so I'm not sure. And it didn't perform that great. What the heck? Um, let 
Oh, I think I know what it is. Maybe not? Where is it? I don't know, guys. What is it, YouTube delete it? <laughs> okay, hold on. There it is. All right. Um, let's see. Moving hands up keyword fast. Check out this lesson. I think you'll like this one. Okay. Fanny says big jumps are only managed by anticipating them. Uh, Tim, what exactly are trills and how does exactly one go about playing them? Okay. Let me do this. Yeah, I kind of realized that orange lights with orange background probably isn't <laughs> probably isn't the best. I, I just kind of thought that maybe I didn't do orange yet. All right, let me get um, let me explain a trill here. I need actually, you know, I have a lesson on trills. But I need to do another one because that one isn't that great. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me change it here. All right. Let me get a trill in here. And let me see if I can remember how to get this in here. Trill. Okay. Dope. Okay. So trills, you can see a trill that um, written as a couple of different ways. You can see it TR with a squiggly line. Um, sometimes it just says TR, there's no squiggly or anything like that. So here's what you do. So as you can see, you have a principal note. That's the note that's real big. That's like the note you would play. So that's your principal note. You see how there's also a note right here in parentheses. Now, they're not always that nice. Sometimes they won't have that written at all. In which case, you're going to be using the next note up the scale. So if that had nothing written at all, you would just assume that that second little note would be a G, which is the second note up from um, G, but it, it's, or F. But it happens to be a G flat. So here's what you do. You start on the G flat, not the note that's written, I know. They make it as confusing as possible. And you alternate between that and the principal note as fast as you can. Um, now, fingers three and two work okay. Three and one is what my... Uh, piano professor always taught me to do three and one so you just alternate between those and it definitely takes some time to get good at them I'm still not like a pro but I've gotten a lot better than I used to be there's definitely a feel aspect to it that you'll get over time but from the little note to the principal note if there's nothing written out there at all you just assume that it's the note the next scale note above so that's how trip or tri trill works not triplet. Tim knows I definitely won't be looking for anything more difficult than what he's teaching today. That is true. Hopefully you're doing a good care and glad to see you with us today. Where's Jeremy and Brian? Um, yeah, I don't know where Rich and Jeremy are. Oh yeah, well Jeremy's like kind of sick. Um, I don't know if he's feeling well today, which is totally fine. Um, so hopefully he'll be back soon. And then Rich, Rich is getting ready for a wedding, so I, I think he also has a pretty good, pretty good reason. Uh, okay, Wenda, Wenda by Cataluca. So I think you're from um, Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Thanks. I'm playing in my first ever concert at age 40 in June, and presenting Canon and still working on it. Thanks for all you do. Well, great. And it's from South Africa. There you go. Uh, glad to hear from you. I just I knew you were from Africa because I had a friend in high school that had a name like yours, um, like my friend Wamba is her her name M W A M B A. Uh, let's see, Avi says okay I've read that already. Tips on straight stage fright. You know I need to make a lesson on this. Tips on stage stage fright are do it more often. 
I know, it's not what you want to hear. But uh, get in front of people more often is a huge one. Self-talk is another huge one. Or just blanking out your mind, like maybe doing some breathing exercises. Whatever you do, don't imagine yourself failing. That's the last thing you want to do. You actually, if anything, want to imagine yourself succeeding. We're not imagining anything at all and just kind of taking everything in as it comes. And just have fun. You know, just try to tell yourself, all right, I'm going to have fun with it. I put all the practice and everything in there. And if there's mistakes, there's mistakes. Don't put it in your mind like, oh, if there's a mistake, it's going to be the worst and everybody's going to laugh at me. I'm going to be, it's, nobody's ever going to forget about it. No, don't tell yourself that. First of all, if you make a big mistake, a lot of times people will forget about it unless it's something like real crazy. But if it's, you know, normal levels of messing up, then uh, people don't even remember. Like, oh, hey, remember when I messed up that piece on my piano recital 10 years ago? No, nobody remembers that. Or very few people do. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Should I stop? Oh, my explanation for using sustain pedal is a good idea or not, or should I stop doing that? Uh, where is it? I don't know if I saw it. Oh, okay. Uh, Avi says, I suggest using a sustain pedal to help fill up the gaps and then start playing slow from starting. Um, I agree with playing slow. Uh, don't use your sustain. Nah. Be careful with how often you use your sustain pedal. You can use it to bridge gaps, but you can't, don't use it to cover up mistakes, which a lot of students do. So you know, they, they kind of assume, oh, well, if I keep, if I keep the pedal down, they won't be able to tell. Yeah, don't do that. Sebastian says, hi, from South Africa. Hello, Sebastian. Glad to have you with us. Avi, you can keep doing that sustain pedal thing, but just be careful not to use it to cover up mistakes. That's all. All right, any questions about um, anything we talked about today? Let me see if I missed anything. Oh, you're talking about um, bridging the gaps uh, between moving up the piano. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, worth remembering that even virtuosos can make mistakes. That is very true. Little make, little mistakes. And even big mistakes, believe me. Okay, I'm trying to remember what I told you guys. Like I said, it's kind of a shorter lesson today because it was just, Canon D is a pretty simple piece. Um, there's so many times I can just say, oh, the, the bass line is the same, uh, you know, before everybody clicks off the video. <laughs> Yeah, for the gap. See, I finally, finally got it after many minutes. Played through my song, though, and I had almost no mistakes in it from the bird. So you played your mistake in the recital? Congratulations, if I'm reading that correctly. Great job. Okay, I don't think I have any other announcements. Um, like I said, putting a lot more work into doing the editing for the videos. Eventually, I am going to hire an editor, but I want to get like the formula down pretty well. Uh, Bold Caution Production says, yes, we saw, the, <laughs> we saw all the editing. Or yes, yeah, saw all the editing. Uh, much work. What are you using to edit? I use something called Premiere Pro. Um, that's the... It's what most people who use Windows use, is Premiere Pro. Um, it's not Final Cut Pro. But it is Pro. No, just now recitals at 3 p.m. Oh, okay, I was just practicing. Well, great. Well, just relax. You know, tell yourself things are going to work out great. And if there are mistakes that you're not going to beat yourself up, not the end of the world. Uh, I need a drink here. Ugh. Uh, 
Okay, see you on Friday. Good night. Um, good evening. Got to go study. I have my finals tomorrow. Well, best of luck to you, Avi, on your finals. Thank you for coming by today, and I'll see you on Friday. All right, any last minute questions? If not, I think I'm just going to kind of edit or end it here. Um, G fuel, G fuel time. I do not have any G fuel apparently, or unfortunately, maybe I should get a sponsor. You know, the only problem with that is like, it's more of a gamer thing. I don't think it would do as well <laughs> for me. The reason I don't do sponsors actually is, um, actually I've tried to do sponsors before, but I can't find anything that isn't like in competition with myself. You know, I'm not going to, um, advertise somebody else's like music courses. That doesn't make any sense. And any, any like kind of software or whatever I am interested, like staff pad, which I talk about all the time. I went to those guys or emailed them and they were like, no, we don't have any kind of program. To, it's like, I don't know. I don't think the guys that made that program are very smart. <laughs> They're smart, but they aren't. I just don't think they had the business sense behind it. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. Yes, go drink some G Fuel Avi and play, or, I don't know, win those finals. Great editing, Tim. I meant that as a compliment. I know how much time it takes. Yes, it does. Editing is both my like one of my favorite and least favorite things to do. I don't, it's kind of fun to like get better at editing and, and have something come together. But at the same time, when you have to do it every week, especially when you have to also make thumbnails and you have to design the lessons and then you have to do work on the website and all that, which is crazy. All right, the bird 101 says bye, Tim. Bye bye. But the bird, have a great week, and I'll see you on Friday. Or whenever you're able to make it. And best of luck to you, for sure. Uh, math exam, though. <laughs> well, best of luck to you anyway, Avi. All right, everybody. I guess I'm going to cash out. Maybe make sure to leave a big, fat like on this video. It helps me out a lot. Oh, one thing I want to tell you. If there's one thing, it's super important. Stay. Don't leave yet. Super freaking important guys there's something that you can do for me if you've been wondering <laughs> how did i i must not have saved it all right hold on hold on i gotta get you something real quick there's something i want you to do right after this lesson is over and it's super super important and if you don't do it well i guess i'll forgive you but okay so here's what I want you to do right after we're done is um, I want you to watch the newest lesson I just put out today on the pop song chord progression. And what I want you to do, if possible, if you have the time, I would really appreciate it, is watch this lesson all the way through and leave a like on it if you found it helpful. But watching the lesson all the way through will really, really, really help me out. So check that out go there as soon as we're done um the only other thing is i think i'm just going to give an outro for when i piece this together and um things like that so to learn the ins and outs of actually playing the piano make sure you check out a lot of the other lessons here on the channel and check out some of these as well it's been your piano teacher tim here thanks for coming by today and i'll see you yes you in the next lesson Uh, Fanny says, thanks a lot, Tim. Um, it's great having your guidelines ever so often and coming together, all of us. Well, you're very, very welcome. Best beginner classical music pieces for practice according to you. I actually have a lesson on this. Let me find it. Um, let me see. Pieces... You know, all right. It's a pretty recent. I have one that's older and one that's recent. Um, 
I think the one you want. No, 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 no. stop. Okay. Ch actually, this has Canon and D in it. It's pretty funny. Oh, man. I look so much better with a hat on. <laughs> I'm roasting myself now. Um, okay. Here's what I want you to do. Is This is great sounding piano pieces that are fun to play. And there are some classical in there. So that can probably explain better than I can do right now. Um, just off the top of my head. Just off the top of my head, though, um, like Canon D is pretty good. Um, for an actual more in the classical, probably for at least something like that. Um, minuet and G. So I think I talked a lot about those in that lesson. So check that out. All right, everybody. Thanks for swinging by. Make sure to leave a big fat like. Thanks for everything. And I'll see you on Friday. Thank you so much.